odds market. I'm Dave Betts. Fashion. This is Theo Goodman. All the tools to be among that few that win. Because they're winning. I'm Stuart from Tipster HQ. My name's Jay Baglia. Hey guys, it's Adia. Some call it gambling. Here to bring you the best political betting tips. It's the booming industry of professional gaming. Odds Market Sports Bet Daily. Bank or management over at Odds Market. Watch us. Martin, happy birthday and welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Natalie. Yeah, Arsenal did their best uh, attempts to ruin it by losing to Crystal Palace at home. But uh, apart from that, a good day was had. I know. I have to say, you're looking you're looking rather fresh for uh, just coming after the day after a birthday. I have to say, were you behaving yourself, or are you just uh, no? I was, just wearing I was. Well? I was feeling horrendous this morning, but it's now uh, seven thirty p.m. here, so I've just about recovered in time. I've been writing about esports all afternoon, so well. I'm. Uh, I'm back in work mode now, sadly. Well, usually takes me two days nowadays to recover. So uh, half those, a day those recovery, two day hangovers are not bad at all. <laughs> well, it, we're going to, we're obviously, we're, we're, we're going to do a bit of a recap. Um, Arsenal, four wins in a row to nil and then lost to Crystal Palace. What, what's happened there, Arsenal fan? Because I certainly let, 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 let a few of my bets down. Yeah, I think they they busted a lot of coupons accumulators with that result. Uh, it was all down to bizarre selections from Unai Emery, really. He uh, really appears to be prioritising the Europa League ahead of the Premier League because um, they have a really good chance of finishing in the top four. But he picked Del Nenny and Gwenduzi to play centre midfield. And those two played against Everton when we lost. Played them again against Crystal Palace and we lost. But when Torreira and Jacker played in the midfield against Napoli, we won comfortably. So mm. I would suggest before betting on Arsenal in future, check to see what team he puts out. Because if it's Gwenduzi and El Nenny, not going to look good. We played Carl Jenkinson at right back, who has no business playing Premier League football. He uh, played Crystal Palace on side for the first goal. And just, yeah, too many players look nervous um, and, yeah, just uh, conceded too many goals, sadly. But a great result for Crystal Palace. Well done to them. That ensures their survival for another season. Yes, yes, it sure does. Well, listen, Arsenal travel to Wolves this week. Um, Arsenal 2.55, Wolves 3 and draw 3.5. Uh, Wolves, again, another, well, certainly for me, a coupon buster. Um, I had them to uh, beat Brighton. I even had two bets on that one. I had Wolves and I had Wolves minus one against a team, Brighton, who just haven't been winning, haven't been scoring. Um, and that was another sort of weird result in my mind. Um, obviously, they host <laughs> Arsenal. Uh, do you think they can get a result out of this? Oh, yeah, I think so. Wolves are a very good side. Uh, played very well at the Emirates when we met earlier in the season. It was one all draw, uh, but they looked very good value for it. Uh, invested heavily in Portuguese talent in the summer, and it's clearly paying dividends. They, they play very good football. And um, like I said, I would check to see what team Arsenal put out because I think that will have a huge bearing on proceedings. But yeah, having said that, they definitely have the tools to, to get a result against Arsenal. I'd probably avoid the outrights and look at goals markets because um, Arsenal are a bit unpredictable as a Wolves. Um, but yeah. I think you'll see both teams scoring there. Arsenal have still got a lot of attacking firepower and they're still very shaky at the back, particularly away from home. So I think you can get about 1.73 on the draw. That looks good to me. Like in the draw, okay, interesting because um, oh. I am uh, worried about. Um, I thought that Wolves would score against the Brighton, they didn't. Arsenal have been keeping the clean sheets. I'm looking at, and I'm a bit worried about the draw, so I'm doing Arsenal draw no bet at one point eight four. I'm 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 just not confident about Wolves scoring. They couldn't score hosting Brighton. Arsenal the clean sheets. I think it. I'm, I'm. I feel it could go either way, but you think both teams to score here. Yeah, I think both teams to score could be a good option. Um, I know Wolves have struggled going forwards a little bit recently, but they do have very good players going forward. Yeah. Jimenez, um, I just think Arsenal's back line as well is just so shaky. I can't remember off the top of my head if um, um, Socrates is back from suspension. I think he's probably still missing for this one, which is a big blow. Uh, and with Mustafi, he's always looking like he's going to make errors. Um, Mavropanos just looks too inexperienced right now if you're playing players like Jenkinson as well we're going to concede uh, mm. so I think check the teams but both teams to score looks the way to go in this 
All right, all right. Tottenham versus Brighton. Tottenham 1.36, draw 5.45 and Brighton 12. Both need this win here. You've got Tottenham there fighting uh, for that top three position. Brighton just three points um, above 18th Cardiff. Both need the win and sometimes uh, it can make for dangerous betting. Um, but obviously Spurs unbeaten still, but I think it's just three games, but unbeaten in their uh, new stadium. Then they went on two back-to-back -back losses against Man City. They did, however, qualify uh, for the Champions League semi-finals. Um, but Tottenham at home, it's low, 1.36. Do you think, can you see anything other than a Tottenham win? Uh, no, not really. Simply uh, Tottenham very rarely draw. I think they've only drawn once all season. Lost the massive 11 games, but they're still third in the table because they've won 22. Uh, the, the race to finish in the top four is looking really tense now. Mm. With all four teams on the same amount of games played, there's only three points between third place Tottenham and sixth place Man United. So it's looking like a gripping, nail-biting end to the campaign. Uh, Spurs desperately need to get back to winning ways in this one. Uh, Brighton obviously battling hard to avoid relegation as well, but I don't think they'll fancy their chances of getting a result at Tottenham Hotspur's shiny new stadium. Yes. Uh, I can see uh, Spurs grinding out like a, a low-scoring win here. They're obviously missing Harry Kane. They've mm. got one eye on the Champions League. Um, but I think they've got enough firepower to just about uh, score one or two against Brighton, who are very poor going forwards at the moment. They've been overly reliant on the ageing legs of Glenn Murray for far too long now. No one else is really pulling their weight going forwards. And uh, I think they'll struggle to break down this very strong Tottenham back line. So for a bit more value, I would be looking at Tottenham to win to nil Ooh. in this game. Um, and yeah, I think you can get... Uh, Pretty good odds on that. Let me just, uh, oh, 11 to 10. So 2.1, 2.1 2 on um, Tottenham win to nil. Looks a good bet for me there because Brighton struggling in attack. Yeah, yeah. Every good, whilst they are unbeaten, they are unbeaten. Then they have won to nil and that was including Man City as well uh, in their new stadium. Um, I agree with the, your, your summary of the match, to be honest. I'm going to play uh, Spurs. Um, you actually can get value. I, I, I was thinking you were going to play your classic there, Martin. Spurs and the under 4.5 goals. Um, there's a smidge of value there, 1.65. Um, but I'm going to push it to Spurs and the under 3.5 um, at odds of two. Um, doubtful whether Brighton can score. And I think that Tottenham will keep it close. So that's my bet there. Nice. Uh, Spurs and the under 3.5. Um all right, final uh, uh, match uh, that I want to talk about is, of course, the Manchester derby. And this is incredibly important uh, for Man City uh, because if they lose this, Liverpool theoretically, obviously they still mathematically could do it, but it, it is more likely looking that Liverpool are going to win, right? If they lose this one, because right now they're, what, two points behind? But Man City have a match in hand. So Man City, obviously, yeah. 1.49. Now, the question is, is obviously th these two teams are rivals, but Man United is, is more so a rival to Liverpool. So will they want Liverpool to win the title? Do you think that they'll like, how do you think that Manchester United will go into this match? Well, I think it's, it's been between uh, Man City and Liverpool recently. Um, and they've asked uh, Gary Neville who he would rather to win. Mm. And he said, it's like, it's like choosing between which of your brothers is going to have sex with your wife. It's like, <laughs> you, you just, you're so, you're so miserable by any outcome. that I think they, they uh, have pretty much equal loathing for Man City and for Liverpool. So it's like a horrendous choice for them. Uh, actually, yeah, probably there's a little bit more enmity with um, Liverpool. They probably just about rather Man City won it I guess but um, yeah. not, uh, not, not be in my neck of the woods myself I can't speak on behalf of Man United fans um, uh, it, would, it, would, it would sicken me if Tottenham won the Champions League I'll say that <laughs> as an Arsenal fan but um, yeah I think this is going to be an interesting game it's crazy to see Man City such a short price mm. to win away at Old Trafford um, it's just a sign of how badly things have gone for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in recent weeks yes. that's six defeats in eight now hammered by Everton at the weekend 4-0 and, yeah. and they just they were lacking motivation they just looked like there was no desire from any of the players 
it's all gone wrong very, yeah. very quickly. I guess they must be regretting handing him the permanent manager's job yeah. so so soon. It's looking like a bit of an impetuous decision right now. Um, it's funny, actually. He's gone into second favourite to be the next Premier League manager to leave his post, despite only being uh, given the job a few weeks ago. And uh, he's, he's a win here would turn things around for Man United, but it's just hard to see where it's going to come from. Man City now, they know um, they're out of the Champions League. They're totally focused on domestic affairs. Mm. They've got just a handful of games left. If they win all of them, they beat Liverpool to the title. Uh, the destiny's in their own hands. Uh, and I fancy them to do it now. Liverpool got the distraction of the Champions League. Yeah. Man City are focused on this. I think they should go to Old Trafford and get a win here. It's just crazy to see them at such a low price. I mean, you can look at giving them a minus one Asian handicap. Then you get about 1.73, 1.74. If you think they're going to win, then the worst you're going to do is get your money back if they win by a single goal. So I guess that would probably be the way to go there. Um, it's it's difficult with Man United right now because they, they've shown that they can play well, but they confidence just seems shot to pieces at the moment and Man City have a deep squad lots of players to come in at this crucial time of the season mm. and uh, yeah I'd fancy them to win it it would be a surprise if they didn't yeah yeah have to say obviously weekend recap here whilst I may have lost a few bets I backed Everton to beat Manchester United odds are around three something like that so I as whilst yeah. I was upset with the nice score one. Super happy with the profit, I have to say. Um, shambles for Manchester United right now. It was looking great. We were looking like we you know get, gonna get in the top four even, and then it just all went kaput. And to be honest with you, I'm really not surprised about the odds. Um, based really again on Manchester United's poor uh, recent form, and then couple that with Man City's sort of desire and need to win this match. Um, uh, obviously, if you if you like to follow trend, um, uh, ma- last three head-to-heads, uh, Man City have won two of those, and the over 2.5 goals and both teams to score has come in on each of those three. Um, but... Um, <sighs> So yeah, so I don't you know if you, if you're following trend, do you think we are going to going to see an over two point five goals, both teams to score kind of match, or do you think this could be opposite? Difficult, isn't it? Um, I mean, under Mourinho, you probably wouldn't expect it, but with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the whole thing is playing the Man United way, bringing back Ferguson's tactics, pouring men forward, pushing the fullbacks up, playing attacking football. So uh, if they do that, that's a very dangerous way to play against Man City because they've got all the tools to rip you apart on the counter attack. Um, but but yeah, they I mean they've got good enough players to score here. You know, uh, Pogba, yeah. Rashford. Yeah, I, I'd consider it. I'd consider a both teams to score in overs. Um, Considering, but pff, basically, yeah, the way Man City played at the weekend against Tottenham was uh, very nervy. Mm. Uh, they just were desperate for the win. They were holding on. Um, it was a very tense game. So it could end up like that. Very difficult at this time of the season. I think there's a. it's difficult at the start of the season. And then there's a real sweet spot for the middle period where you can make lots of profit as a sports better. And then final few weeks when it gets really tense, it's very difficult because some of the yeah. teams are already on their holidays. They've got nothing left to play for. And for some teams, they're so desperate for points that the, it, it affects their mentality and sometimes you see results that go against historical trends so yeah. difficult maybe keep your stakes uh to a minimum on this one but um yeah. for me i'll go man city minus one asian handicap all right there we go in about uh two minutes we're going to get uh, adam booth on the line here uh talking about dota uh just a couple of things uh before i let martin go uh, so um, uh, the bet i like actually uh sorry is man city in the under 4.5 goals at uh, 1.95 um man city have won last seven games Games, all of them under 4.5 goals. So following a bit of trend uh, myself there, that's what I'm taking. Uh, Rude Boy did ask, now I know you said both teams to score, Wolves, Arsenal. Did you also like the draw or was that a lean? Uh, we all know Rude Boy doesn't like Arsenal, so that's why he wants Wolves to win this one. Um, but no, <laughs> I I'd, I'd be staying away from I didn't know that they did. Yeah, he said, oh, Arsenal lost or whatever. And I was like, yes, on Martin's birthday weekend. Yeah, Do you think he was good. just, not... yeah, he was wondering what the tip is. Did you did you like the draw or you what what or was that just a lean? No, st- I'm staying away from the outrights on staying that away. one. Yeah, going for both going for both teams to score. Um, right. I think Arsenal are too unpredictable at the moment. Wolves don't really have anything to play for. They're they're not going to go down. It doesn't look like they're going to get a Europe 
be in spot a Europa League place mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's just a bit of a questionable one but I think we should see a good open game Arsenal good going forwards yeah. terrible at the back so yeah both teams to score looks good for me all right, there you go, Rude Boy. Both teams to score Martin's pick. All right, very quickly, uh, we're getting Adam set up for the call. Early uh, out, um, early odds right now. Um, is there anything that has caught your eye? Um, obviously, now we do have, uh, obviously, we've got Chelsea Burnley, uh, which is going to kick off in 10 minutes. Uh, and then we've obviously got the four midweek games. Is there anything that you're liking right now where you think that the odds are going to move um, or any early prices that you think we should jump on right now? Um, I think it's not a huge price, but Liverpool to win to nil against Huddersfield on Friday mm. night looks good Ooh, to yes. me at about 1.7. Could Ooh. go out a little bit more. They're very strong at the back this season. Um, what else? Um, Fulham, obviously, won two in a row. It's like they've been relegated and they've just suddenly remembered how to win. They've beaten Everton and Bournemouth in their last two games. You yeah. can get 2.5 on them to beat Cardiff. Bit of a difficult one because Cardiff are battling for relegation. You might also like 2.75 on Chelsea to go and win at Man United. I mean, the form that they've been in is pretty horrendous. Chelsea have won four of their last five games and they're looking good. So that might be tempting. Probably both teams to score again in the Leicester versus Arsenal game. Brighton are going to be desperate for a win. They're, uh, they're also yeah. battling relegation. 2.3 on them picking up a win over Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle look like they're due a defeat. So uh, maybe 2.3 on that. But yeah, it's a tricky round of fixtures. Watford Wolves looks like a both teams to score one. Um, Crystal Palace v Everton, very unpredictable. So um, yeah, I'd say those are probably the best ones for me. I do yeah. like uh, Liverpool. Um, or maybe look at Liverpool in the under 4.5 goals or something against Huddersfield. They're um, oh, yeah. having lots of controlled wins now. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. Martin Green, thank you very much. I'll see you on uh, Thursday Thanks. for the Best Bet show. Until then, Looking take care. Look forward to it. All right. Can't wait. Can't wait. Nice one. All right. Uh, yes, so uh, Wednesday as well, if you want the full uh, week 36 uh, breakdown, uh, it'll be over at Sportsbook Review and um, uh, be joined with uh, Flash and Russ there.